Hello. Uh, well, today, uh, uh, I saw <clears throat> a new movie uh, last night. Uh, uh, Oppenheimer. Christopher Nolan's uh, newest film. I saw it on uh, July 20th, which was yesterday at the time you're seeing this. Um, I'm recording this video on the cusp of the end of July 20th at the beginning of July uh, 21st. Uh, the day it officially releases uh, uh, worldwide, you know, it's a Thursday thing, and Fred and I decided that we were going to go and see it, and we did, and uh, we both enjoyed it. Um, now, because it is new, you know, I'm not really going to get into spoilers, though. Considering it's a historical film, I think, uh, if you have a decent knowledge of Oppenheimer, you'd probably be able to uh, gather uh, enough of, a, of what the plot would be. But in short, you know, it's about, you know, uh, uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, played by Killian Murphy. Uh, uh, Well, creating the bomb uh, and how uh, they go about uh, looking for all the right people to uh, uh, like all the scientists and everyone to come together and you know, town is built at Los Alamos so that everybody can go and be comfortable you know and it's just just seeing how all that uh comes together uh, is fantastic. Um, Kelly Murphy does an excellent job. First time he's the lead in a Nolan film. And man, he's great. I, I, I love him. He's uh, it, He was incredible in this film. Emily Blunt as his Oppenheimer's wife Kitty is great also. Uh, Matt Damon as Leslie Uh, Groves, uh, I believe <laughs> that's his name, uh, was excellent. Robert Eddy Jr. as uh, Louis Strauss was great. Florence Pugh as uh, Oppenheimer's mistress. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, everybody in this film is excellent, you know, and... Um, you know, uh, you do get to you know, obviously see the atomic bomb get, uh, you know, blow. Done with practical effects, and that effect was amazing. Especially in IMAX, I got to, you know, see it. You know, the, in an IMAX, I, I, I just, uh, you know, it's the first time since The Dark Knight Rises... Uh, that I went to an IMAX theater because the one here in Des Moines which is closed now which I've often talked about here and there isn't the wasn't the greatest um, though they are apparently gonna you know uh, like open it up again and sort of I guess renovate it which hopefully they do that uh, right because you know that, that IMAX screen uh, you know if you again if you were to have that IMAX screen in your own home and if you had a home movie theater and you wanted it to look like an IMAX because your home was big enough then that was that'd be a perfect uh, size screen but for an actual IMAX theater that you are paying money to that was just like no this IMAX was great it was fantastic Kenneth Brenner as Neil Neil Bors. Uh, uh, Gary Oldman as President Truman. Uh, the, the cast in this film is excellent. I, I just like you know I the score by Lou Ludwig Gorgson is uh, amazing. Also, cinematography is phenomenal by uh, Hoyt Van Otema. Just. Uh, 
everything about this film is excellent. I just, uh, I love it. Uh, of course, these are my initial thoughts, but, you know, it, this is this is still an amazing film. Um, if you're able to see it uh, in a theater, uh, I would recommend it. The film is three hours. However, it does not feel like three hours. I would say, at least for me, it seemed like two. Um, like, as how fast it went, and, I, and that's a good thing. When a film is three hours long, and you don't feel the three hours, that's just how, that's just, that's great. Uh, you know, nothing sucks more than watching a long movie, and you get to, and then you feel the length. Uh, it's one thing if perhaps in the beginning it's sort of slow, you know, because it's starting out and it's sort of building. But you shouldn't f start to feel it any longer than at the at the very beginning. Um, Josh Hartnett was in this film. Uh, uh, Casey Affleck. Uh, Yeah, this, this this film goes back and forth between the subjective and objective, you know, black and white for what we absolutely do know what was said, either because there's enough people to corroborate the overall story, so we have a general consensus of what was said, and then of course there are certain instances where, you know, everything is typed out, you know, like certain uh, things heard and... Uh, like certain like hearings and such, um, men in color is about the, you know, what, what we overall we know generally happened, but what specifically, you know, all the specifics of what was said at all, we don't totally know. Um, and it was really cool to see it going back and forth, and it's not at all confusing. Um, I know for people. You know, like, Nolan's films can be very confusing. This is not one of those. This is not a confusing movie at all. It's something that is completely... You know, you you understand it from beginning to end. It is nothing... Nothing uh, to ever confuse you. It is pretty linear overall. You know, it's... You're able to understand it. It's not going back and forth constantly and you have to pay attention to every single thing going on uh, to the extent of like uh, Inception or Tenet or any movie people are like you gotta watch it multiple times in order to properly understand it uh, this is a movie that is just very well done it's a very well told story um, it touches about on you know his days where he was hanging and affiliated with people who were in the Communist Party, though he was not a member himself, but, you know, his brothers, sister-in-law, uh, his wife, all at one point were members of the Communist Party. He never was, but because of these affiliations, you know, this sort of, when they were going to look for people to head the Manhattan Project, uh, stuff like that was looked at, and they were, uh, they knew that he was very good at what he does, but still, you know, the whole thing is, you know, can he be trusted with certain information, and, uh, and yeah, that's a, that's a contention with the film in terms of, like, uh, instances of conflict, um, but yeah, it's interesting how, you know, the characters interact and how the film just goes uh, and shows you things. Uh, of course, you know, going between objective and subjective. Um, uh, on the off chance you don't know too much about Oppenheimer, I don't want to say more. Uh, too much more because you know could potentially spoil the film you know it's history but still there are people who um and i can understand this sometimes you know you see a movie or you read a book about a certain story 
and um, about a very a certain su specific subject. And if the movie or the book is really good, you might want to learn more. So if it's a book, you might <clears throat> try to find other books. But if it's a movie, that could be a springboard in you learning more about a certain subject. And, the, and in this case, Oppenheimer and the various people involved in his life and the things going on around a, a very particular moment in his life, such as, you know, uh, developing and, you know, the nuclear bomb and the people he is affiliated with, uh, from scientists, to the people in the military and uh, uh, certain politicians, as well as just other people that he's known during that time is uh, it's a very good film uh, I can't say enough good things about it it's really good I just uh, you know it's rated R which is the first R rated film since Insomnia which was in 2002 yeah so uh, yeah and the language in this film and there's some of this nudity and some sex that happens yeah it's it kind of you know I understand why and it's these things are put in the film and it's not just to be very like like the sex sexual stuff and nudity aren't done just to be very like titillating or anything there is a purpose to it it's you know there it's not just there just for the sake of being there um I just, I just love this film. It's really good. Um, even some of the people that, you know, you might, you know, see as uh, antagonists or something, you know, I think they're very interesting. And, of course, nobody is just black and white. Like, well, well, he did. Like, well, he's the bad guy or whatever. He's clearly the good guy. You know, people are very complex. They have certain reasons for doing what they do, whether you agree with them or not. Uh, is one thing and and for some of them I want to kind of <laughs> learn more about and see just more specifically because you know the the film is three hours so they can only show and tell so much about things within three hours and the film is primarily through the eyes of Oppenheimer himself so you know even for some of the other characters that for like the scenes where Oppenheimer isn't there um there are moments where he, uh, where it's big, big, in a way, it was sort of like this would be sort of, uh, in, the, in his eyes of his view of things, in addition to what was going on, what we do know. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very, it's a very unique film. Uh, really great film. I, I, I love this film. Uh, of course, I've only seen it once. I hope to see it again at some point. Um, in the theater, uh, but yeah, and the thing, and it wasn't overtly loud. I know that's a big thing with Nolan, and regarding like people criticizing his stuff. His stuff is always loud. This film isn't all that loud. I mean, there are moments where the music can get very loud, as well as you know, the bombing and explosions and such, but. It's all very well done. It's just, it's it's not something that's be like a tenet or whatever, where people would complain about the <clears throat> sound being very loud. Uh, you don't have to worry about that here, if that's a concern of yours. Everybody's performances are excellent. You know, this is the kind of film that should sweep the Academy Awards. Um, I know there's certain rules in place that might prevent this film from being nominated for Best Picture. I don't really want to get into that because that kind of gets into some political stuff and I'm not all that <laughs> interested, honestly, but, you know, uh, they are what they are. And uh, I guess come the Academy Awards, whether or not they will actually go through with honoring what they those rules are, uh, or not, we will, we will see. Um, but, you know, 
uh, Christopher Nolan deserves an Academy Award. He should already have at least a couple by now. And he doesn't, and that's just, uh, just stupid. You know, I think it's uh, even a wrong. The fact that the Academy Awards are supposed to be the best, and yet you have somebody who makes it some of the best films, uh, you know, of this century so far, and yet he has been nominated only five times, once for direction, and, uh... <clears throat> You would think that a nomination number would be higher, and he would actually have at least a, at least one win, if not uh, two or three. Um, but yeah, he uh, he deserves an Academy Award. Kelly Murphy, Emily Blunt, and Robert Downey Jr. deserve Academy Award nominations at least. You know, of course, the year is still going. It's July. It's summer. So. You know, have to wait until the end of the year to totally uh, see about the entire acting field. But for me, they deserve uh, Academy Award nominations for Best Actor for Murphy, uh, Supporting Actor for Robert Downey Jr., and Emily Blunt for Supporting Actress. Because, you know, throughout the film, you know, uh, she has an important presence, very big presence, but not big enough to where you would... Uh, deem her uh, best actress, in my opinion. Um, she's very important to the film, um, but not lead. You know, Kelly and Murphy as Ro J. Robert Oppenheimer, he is the lead. Um, yeah, it's. This is amazing. I just want to. I just wanted to try and say. <laughs> all the things I've been thinking about since getting out of the theater a few hours ago. So I know I might be a little more scatterbrained than normal, but I hope you understand. Um, also, James Woods, you know, actor James Woods, you know, I not long ago talked about Videodrome. Uh, he's an executive producer on this film, so it was nice to see his name up on the big screen. Uh, he's not in this film, but, you know... Uh, it's nice that he had a hand in assisting this film and, like, getting it up off the ground. But uh, just a great film overall. Christopher Nolan uh, hits another one out of the park. He's just, he's amazing. I just, I love his work. He, he's a great filmmaker. Performances are excellent. Um, the score is great. Visual effects is great. Cinematography is great. You know, everything you could just have a glowing review about. Yeah, that's, you know, that's me. That's, this is just fantastic. Um, uh, uh, this year, you know, July 18th, uh, is the 50, 15th anniversary of The Dark Knight. July 20th, uh, 11th anniversary of The Dark Knight Rises. And, uh, yeah, Oppenheimer is fantastic. Um, uh, from here, uh, Nolan keeps keeps going with all the great stuff. He keeps making excellent stuff, and uh, I hope he keeps doing it. You know, I know there are certain people like uh, Quentin Tarantino who says he's going to hang it up after ten films. Uh, apparently, the next film Clint Eastwood will make is supposedly going to be his last, because I guess from what I've gathered from sources close to him, he, he's not retiring because he actually wants to, but because it seems like the uh, entire Hollywood, like Hollywood as a whole, is basically moving forward without him. Like, they're trying to move away from people like him. <clears throat> um... You know, that'd be like, you know, making way for new directors and such. But, you know, I mean, you never know. They might say one thing, but they might just want certain people out just because reasons. But uh, with that going on, I hope no one keeps making more of more films. <clears throat> yeah, he's great. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see him 
receive uh, some accolades. Uh, I'm sure that this uh, that this film will make a good amount of money. Um, it'll be in theaters for a hundred days, which is from a guarantee by Universal. And uh, at, like for like three weeks before and after, there will no, be no Universal film uh, to compete with Oppenheimer. So therefore, you know, it will uh, have an actual fair chance at uh, doing well without having to compete with other Universal films. Of course, Barbie came out on the same day. <clears throat> and no, I'm not going to see Barbie just because it just doesn't. Uh, it just doesn't really uh, uh, look all that great to me. I just have no interest in Barbie. Um, but if people enjoy Barbie, that's great. Uh, yeah, I'm not a part of Barbie, uh, Barbie Heimer. Where uh, Barbie becomes the destroyer, destroyer of worlds. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, uh, that's my overall thoughts. Sort of scattered, but hopefully makes sense uh, overall. But yeah, I hope uh, hope this video actually does uh, some good on the chance you're curious about seeing this film, but just maybe have reservations, particularly of the runtime, as well as maybe for sound and such. I know that was that's a big thing for people. With no one so <clears throat> hopefully that alleviates some concerns people might have but yeah I uh, I with that I think I will uh, end it there hope you're all having a great day hope you all, you all had a, have had a great week hope you'll have a great weekend and I'll see you all next time